you're here, we're going to get started. <coughs> Apologize, I'm coughing. The allergies are bothering me for some reason. <coughs> Can everybody see the slide? <coughs> Excuse me. It's the Empire State Building, actually. <laughs> and Manhattan. <coughs> Wonderful. I see some old faces here, familiar faces. I see some new faces today. Again, just bear with me. Um, I'm just kind of hoarse talking a lot. But we're going to talk today. And if you have questions, you can ask me. <coughs> and if we want to go look at charts, we'll look at charts too. If I take the slide off to go to a chart, I will tell you before I do. Okay, so you don't lose me. And if you want to chat, you just chat in the box here. Or just put hi. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. Well, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Armo, and I live in New York. I trade the stock market. I specifically trade gaps, and I focus on shorts. And I'm actually doing a live class in New York. It's the first class I've ever done live, and, and it's just a one-time special event that I'm doing in hard to believe, less than two weeks. And I'm doing this to meet people face to face, to get people a chance to come and learn in person. Most of the classes that I've done <clears throat> since I started the business, in fact, all of the classes have been online. And, you know, I've had people over the years say they'd like to learn in person and they learn better face to face. Well, you know, I definitely think that's true for, for some people, depending on how you absorb information. <laughs> but I think this is a good opportunity for people to not only meet me and learn, but also meet other traders too. So if you have any questions as we go along today about the class or about gaps, you can ask me. For those of you that don't know, I appear on TV. I was recently on Fox on Labor Day discussing the stock market and interest rates. So next week, the Fed is poised to, uh, everyone thinks, cut rates. And I think that they will, but not as much as everyone thinks. So it'll be interesting to see how the market reacts because we could have a very volatile uh, trading next week and going into next week, actually, leading up into the Fed. If you have questions today, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So again, the class in New York is coming up. It's September 20th, 21st, and a half day, the 22nd. Again, this class is a one-time event, and the deadline to sign up for this is the 12th. Now, if you've been following me, you're aware of this class. I've been talking about it for a few months, actually, since May. And <clears throat> so if you are interested in this, Thursday is the deadline. It's a week before the class. Um, and again, you would have to email me to get the information to sign up, and then also the location, but you would have to come to New York City. Some people are flying to New York. They live in other states. Um, I have one person that uh, is talking to me about signing up that lives out of the country, so that'll be interesting. And again, if you live in the Northeast, you can travel by car or train or bus to get to the class. So if you're interested in this, you can email me as well. So here we are, less than 60 days away from the United States election, and we saw the sell-off last week. If you didn't trade last week, there was a sell-off, which was very unusual to have so much volatility right after or during a Labor Day holiday, but the market sold off last week, even though it was a short week. And again, we have less than two months of the election, I think 58, 57 days, I have to go, go look at a calendar, coming up very quickly. So normally, in this type of environment, you wouldn't necessarily see big fluctuations in market moves prior to a presidential election. I don't think this year is going to be the same way. Uh, we already have seen something different to start out September. Uh, again, this doesn't necessarily mean a sell-off. Could mean a sell-off. Could mean a rally. Could mean we make new highs. Could mean we fall off a cliff. You don't know. Volatility is things that happen that are unexpected. That's the whole point unexpected. And so that may sound scary to someone that is a swing trader, but actually for a day trader like me, 
um, which is what I do, whether I do options or margin trades in the room where, where I do day trades, either way, it's exciting to have volatility because it gives you an opportunity to make money, okay? And again, I do prefer to short. So last week was a really good week. We did puts um, and they worked. Why? Because the market sold off, stocks sold off. Again, we're gonna talk today specifically about gaps and what I do. But if you go back historically, <laughs> in 2020, which was COVID, but still 2020 running up to the election, 2016, uh, even 2012, you can look at the period going up into the election. It isn't always volatile. It's usually steady as she goes. But again, there's a lot of pressure on the Fed to lower interest rates next week. And again, before the election and also pressure to lower them a lot. Okay. And then of course the election itself. And tomorrow night we have a debate that could even affect the market on Wednesday. I wouldn't even be surprised if, you know, if what happens tomorrow night could affect the market Wednesday morning. I mean, this is just the world that we live in right now. So like I was saying, volatility equals profits if you know how to train, if you know the direction to trade the market, if you know the direction to trade the stock, okay? So we were talking about what's the point of learning how to trade? Making extra money on the side? Yes, or you can do this full time. Now, full time does not mean you're sitting at a desk all day from 9.30 to 4, the hours of the stock market. Full time is you are giving this your all and this is 100% what you're doing and you're not doing anything else. So when I started out trading, I was doing mortgages where I worked for myself and I wanted to do something else where I worked for myself too. And then I found out about trading and I gravitated towards it and particularly day trading, but there are certain things that you need in order to be successful. Number one, you need a winning strategy. That should go without saying, but there's so many people that trade the market that don't have any strategy at all, let alone a winning strategy. Number two, you need a supportive mentor. I try to be that for people as much as I can. Be there for them to ask questions. Email me, call me. Again, the live trading room that I run every day is a place where people can ask questions and then I answer them and I'm there live. And then number three, I think you also have to become an expert in one thing. If you are jumping around from thing to thing to thing, it's very difficult to ever become an expert. Uh, we, the US Open, again, was in Queens and the US Open just finished. You know, people that are professional tennis players are not also professional football players and baseball players and wrestlers, you know, people in sports even, okay? Somebody gets good at one thing. And that's really how they make it big and become successful, okay? And I'm seeing some people come in here late. If you came in late, you can chat in the room if you have any questions down at the bottom of the chat box. But anyways, becoming a jack of all trades and a master at none is not the right thing with trading. It really isn't in any, any type of career field, at least the way that I look at it, Say you wanted to become an attorney, well, you have to have a specialty. Say you wanted to become a doctor. Again, you have to have a specialty. A doctor in what? Are you going to become a surgeon, general practitioner, you know, whatever, okay? So becoming an expert is really extremely important, I think, in any career field. But again, trading, same thing. Now, as I was saying, I was talking about the sell-off we had in the market last week. Why do I like to short? What are the benefits of shorting? Why have I gravitated towards shorts more so than longs? Again, I will go long. We're going to talk about one long here that we did um, the end of August in the room. But I like shorts because selling happens fast. I mean, when you think about it, you're like, oh, yeah, that totally makes sense. If you're in a stock and it's plummeting, okay, you want to get out. It's panic. You could be panicking, okay, and or you could be knowing other people that are panicking. And you sort of saw that last week. So one of the benefits of shorting is you're shorting what? You're shorting the panic. And so the moves come fast, which I like. And again, this doesn't matter if you do a put, which is a short as an option, or if you do a day trade short, a margin, same thing, same concept. You're shorting the price of the stock or the market's falling. So the benefit is the moves come in fast and they also can come in very big. What's another benefit of shorting? A lot of people that trade don't know how to short. It's just the way it is. And it's probably always gonna be the way it is. Like when I started trading, it was 2008. It was that way then. 
it's 2024, it's almost 2025, it's that way now. For some reason, and again, if you're here, if you're a person that's not really acclimated to shorting, you know a lot of people prefer to go long rather than short that are day traders. Again, I, I, for me, it was never that way. But if you get to learn how to short and you're good at it, you'll have a niche, okay? So that also is very important. And that makes you special, just like we were talking about if you said, I want to be a doctor, but I want to be a brain surgeon. So, ooh, he's going to be a brain surgeon. There's only this many people that can do this type of thing. That's what you want to do, okay? That's, again, the idea of getting good at one thing that's a specialty, okay? So it's about taking, you know, risk, okay? But it's also about taking calculated risk. You shouldn't just take risk for risk's sake. So like say, um, I was having this conversation with somebody the other day. Um, well, no, let me tell you a story. This morning, does anyone look at what happened this morning to uh, Big? You can put it, plop it in. Big lots. <laughs> Actually, let me pull it up. Can anybody see this chart? Can you see it? If not, I'll reset it. So we're talking about calculated risk. So Big Lots came out fired chapter filed chapter eleven bankruptcy today. So like look, this is like for now it's gone. So again, the stock this was eight o'clock this morning didn't open today. Now will it never open again? I don't I don't know. It might not. So, again, what if you were a person and you bought this, and I'm just making this up, just making up a scenario here to show you because this happened. What if you bought this two weeks ago, okay? Uh, no, let's make it up. Let's, let's go back even farther. The beginning of the year. Say you bought it January-ish. The stock was like at six something, okay? You're like, oh my God, this is, I'm going to buy it. This is holding support. The market's strong. The market's making new highs. This is the beginning of January, 2024. You're like, I'm going, this is going to be the wheel of a steel. It's going to run just, I'm just going to buy a load up on this. It's going to run up to seven, run up to eight, run up to nine, whatever, Okay. It's rallying, it's in an uptrend, it's going to take off again. December, the stock rallied. Looks like 1227, it was at 841. Again, that was not a good trade if, if somebody did that. You can see that people did buy it in December. You can see that people did buy it in January. You could see that people bought it in February too. In April, look, we're looking at it. But the fact is that today, the stock never opened. I don't know why this has a tick here at 49 cents, but the stock actually was at 29 cents this morning, never opened, and looks like on, oh, that's where it closed on Friday. The 49 cents, 48 cents was where it closed on Friday. So if this, if, if this never reopens, okay, which it may not because of the Chapter 11 filing, then the people that bought it are out out the shares, out the money, whatever they spent in it. Kind of similar. Remember when Kmart, Kmart went bankrupt? Like, I think they were in and out of bankruptcy a couple of times. Anyways, th buying this stock at any point, even in 2024, was risky business, okay? Not a calculated risk by any stretch of the imagination. And again, every single person now that owns shares of the stock is underwater. And even even if they even if they reopen it, um, which sometimes happens, even if they do a chapter filing, they can reopen it later. Even if it didn't open today, but it's pro it probably not going to. But the fact is that it wasn't a good risk, okay. And so, while it might have been a huge winner in the sense that you could load up and buy a lot of a stock even cash not on margin at six bucks or five dollars or four dollars or even a buck or even at 50 cents again i don't trade penny stocks 
even if it had gone a little bit, a little bit up, you could have made out if you bought, but it wasn't a good trade is my point. Let me go back to here what I'm saying here. So the point is that you can't take risk for risk's sake, even if you say, well, this is totally worth it because the this is could, this could really pay off big time or whatever the case may be. That doesn't make it a good trade off for the risk. So a good trade off for the risk is you calculate having all of the odds in your favor for a trade to go in your in your way in the direction that you take it whether it's long or short and there's so many reasons that you believe that that trade is going to work in that direction again whether you go long or short even though i prefer to short that you say this is worth the risk of the money that i'm putting in the trade because there's so many reasons that i think this is going to fall for example okay and you could say the same thing with it rallying, but today we're just, we're focusing on shorts. So again, how do I make that determination? And, and this is the what I teach in my class. I use a 26 point checklist. If I go through 26 things and I get 20, that's the cutoff or more, I say, woo, that's a lot of things. Then I'm, I'd like talk myself into it then by that point that I get so many things that tells me this stock is gonna fall. And if I don't take this trade, it's crazy. It's like, you know, crazy not to take it because it has a really high odds amount of working in my favor with this many things versus just like I said, you know, buying a stock on support or, or, or like the big lots, like for example, okay? The other thing you need is you need to be consistent. And again, going to what we were talking about, I like to focus on the short side. Why do I focus on the short side? Again, it gives me a niche, something that a lot of people aren't good at. I'm also can take trades very quickly and early in the morning and get out very quickly so I don't have to sit and wait at my desk all day. And again, similar to what we were talking about before, that stocks have very large moves to the downside. So again, when you're trading, whether you have a thousand shares or two thousand shares or three thousand shares, if the stock drops a dollar, or two dollars that's a big move depending on the quantity of share size you have but what you don't want to do is have to take ten thousand shares and have a stock move 10 cents only which is not a big move in any in most things that we trade anyways and then even macy's which was cheap that we traded 10 cents wouldn't be a big move you'd have to take ten thousand shares of something to make a thousand dollars where if a stock drops a dollar and you short it and you have a thousand shares you can make a thousand dollars okay so again, every time I'm looking to trade, every single time, I'm trying to be consistent with what I look for. I'm looking for the gap, I'm rating the gap, and I'm also looking for stocks where I can pinpoint the direction of the institutional money. And how do I determine that? Like I said, I rate the gap. So gaps are something that happens all the time. Again, last week was just surprising where we had a very busy week and a lot of gaps in the market because of the sell-off. There are some times where we have a plethora of gaps. There could be tons and tons and tons of gaps. Uh, there could be 500 gaps in the morning. Then some days there could be only five, okay? Uh, but the reality is that you can't trade every gap in the direction of the gap. So again, some gaps are nothing gaps. Some gaps are powerful displays of institutional money, but the most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction. And I think that's what's going to be really interesting about the market. And when I say the market, I mean the QQQs of the SPY. In fact, let me just pull that up really quickly. Um, what's going to be really interesting here is, blow this up, whether or not this sell-off that we saw, okay, this was last week, like I said. Again, holiday week was a short week. It's going to be very interesting to see if this sell-off follows through or if it doesn't. We could flip. We could make new highs. You never know. Okay. Again, how did last week end up being such a profitable week for us? Because the market gapped down and we shorted it and it worked. So going back to the start of last week, which was actually Tuesday because Monday was Labor Day. Market closed here at 476.27 and opened down at 473.20, okay? Then we fell off a planet. 
So even this bar here, high was 473, low was 459. We broke 460 in the queues last week. This is a $13, $14 bar in the market. That is, like we were just talking about big moves. That's a big move. Okay. So getting back to what I was saying, gaps happen all the time. Okay. Something big could happen. Could last for a day. Could last for a couple of days. Could last for a couple of weeks. Okay. A change could be occurring. Again, could be fast, could be longer. But as active traders, as day traders, we get in, get out. We get in, get out. We get in, get the move, get out. That's what I like to do. Again, it's talking about booking profits. So here's the, here's the market. I stuck this in here. So what do I mean by institutional money? I mean looking for power money in the market. Is it buying or is it selling? They say, well, the market's been in an uptrend. It's in an uptrend. It's been in an uptrend all year since January. Again, here we are, not quite halfway through September, but eight and a half months into the year. It's true. Market's in an uptrend. But what if it doesn't hold it? You know, we have three and a half months left between, between now and the end of 2024. If you're someone that only knows how to go long and you don't know how to short, and you're actively trading, or you're not good at shorting, or you don't know what to short, what if we turn? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna make money? I'm not predicting that the market turns direction in the next three and a half months. I'm saying it could. And I'm also saying that if in fact it does, day traders, active traders, swing traders, retail traders that have made money consistently buying dips and support and going long for the first eight months plus of 2024, will give all of the money that they made back and end the year down if we turn the corner between now and the end of the year. It sounds impossible, but yet that is exactly what will happen because when, again, selling starts and when it happens, it happens quick and fast without, without no uh, warning. And again, people tend not to want to short, don't know how to short, don't short the right things, get in too late, okay? and then get all kerfluffled about what to do and then revert back to their process of, you know, going long in the buying process. Which again, I'm not against going long. We're gonna talk about, like I said, one long we did in the room in here shortly. But the whole idea of institution money is it buys stocks, sells stocks, buys a market, sells a market. And, and I figure all this out by reading the price. Reading price is extremely important. If you are watching the economic data, you are, you are all over the place trying to make decisions lately because it's not matching up. So the only way that you can say, I have 100% conviction in this, I'm gonna short it, or I'm gonna go long or whatever, is if you're looking at the chart, if you're looking at the price, because otherwise you're like, well, you know, are they going to drop rates two points next week, a point. I mean, some people today were saying a point and a half, which there's no way that's gonna happen, but people are actually saying that. And of course the market was up today. Market rallied today, okay? So reading the footprints of institutional money is really the only way that if you learn how to do it, you can be sure that you're gonna get something in the right direction. Because again, if you're going long and the stock rallies, you're gonna be up. If you're shorting and the stock drops, you're going to be up too. Again, it's getting the direction correct that many, 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 many traders don't know how to do right. And then, of course, getting the timing right too, which I'm, I'm usually very aggressive in. So I usually, I tend to get in trades very quick and very early. Uh, we shorted NVIDIA last week. It was a great trade. We're going to go over this here. We're going to look at the chart. So Tuesday, I called the 110 NVIDIA puts. They were dirt cheap. Uh, they expired on Friday, so we had four days to get it to move. It didn't matter. They went. And actually, if you held this trade, I did not hold this into the last day. You made the mo You made more than 268% if you held this trade into the last day. I'll look at the chart in a minute. But it was $1.70 for one contract. So again, whether you took an advanced trader risk like me or a beginner trader risk of seven contracts, this is an exit. Taking it on Tuesday, exiting it on Wednesday, you could have risked 1190 and made 3185 Here's the chart. So this was here. Stock close here, gap down. If you held this though into Friday, look where it went. It's crazy. Again, I don't think it makes sense to hold a trade into the last day 
as much as this was up, it could always go against you. But if you would have made the biggest return on investment, if you'd held this into Friday, which is so, that's, that's rare. We don't get that all the time. It just showed you again, the power of what happened in NVIDIA last week. So what happened in NVIDIA last week? Well, it sold off. People dumped it. Institutional money dumped it. You could say, well, why? Woo, this thing, that thing. Again, none of those things really matter. What matters is if you got the trade, you made the money, again, you get in, get out. You could, you could, I don't play it this way, but you could take a position size, get out of half in the first drop and then hold the rest if you want. You could do that too. Now, any questions about this? Now, I know some of you are interested in options. This is an example of what the options newsletter looks like. And then, of course, they get sent out on an email to you in live time. And you just buy it. And again, you would buy the put. I don't want to keep talking here if anybody has any questions. Does anybody have any questions here before I keep going? Joe, you're late. That's okay. How long does it usually take one to run the 26-point checklist in order to find the daily candidate stock to trade? That's a good question. First of all, I do sleep eight to nine hours a night, so I'm not getting up at two o'clock in the morning to read thousands of gaps, so you know. Uh, so it is not gonna take you like 100 hours to do it. However, that being said, you can get a head start at night. Uh, we can, you have gaps at night, Joe. Now you may not have known this, we're gonna look at one right now. Oracle is gapping as we speak. So let's say you live on the West Coast, okay? You're like, oh my God, I can't get up at six o'clock in the morning or whatever. You can look at the nighttime gaps. So Oracle is gapping up. I'm not gonna look at this till the morning because things change a lot in the morning. But I wanna show you here that this stock is up 151, it's here. So if you want to rate gaps at night, you can do that. Now there's gonna be morning gaps too. So in the morning, you can double, triple check what's in the morning after you do the nighttime ones if you want. If you are like me though, I'm an early morning person. By the end of like this time of the day, and the reason I don't rate gaps at night is I'm tired and I wanna give myself, you know, a, a, my brain a break from charts, so I shut it down and then I get up in the morning early and then I rate everything then because I'm an early morning person. My brain functions better in the morning. I do not rate hundreds and hundreds of things though every day, why? I make a watch list and that might take me five minutes. So that watch list, depending on how busy we are, like I just told you last week was a busy week. I don't know if you heard that before you came in Joe or not, Last week was a busy week. I didn't think it was going to be, but it ended up being a busy week. If it's a busy week for gaps, then you may have 10 or 15 or even 20 things that you're rating. If it's not a busy week, you might have three or four a day, I mean. So again, I don't know what's gonna happen this week or next week, how busy we're gonna be, because we were busy last week and I didn't think we were gonna be. Earning season is a busier time. There's more gaps than non-earning season. But like I said, it's an election cycle. We have the Fed, we have lots of stuff going on. So there will be more gaps for more reasons and other things, not just earnings. It sucks gap for news and gap for earnings and gap for lots of lots of things. Could be with the market, could be with the sector. But anyways, once you learn it per ticker, okay, per gap, it shouldn't take you more than five minutes to rate one. Now, again, I don't rush it. I could, you know, rate these in my sleep. I could quick rate one in like 30 seconds, but I don't want to do that. So I take my time. But the point is you're going to make a watch list. We say, how do you know to make a watch list if there's like 2,000 things gapping? Because once you learn the system and once you learn the criteria, at the beginning, you're going to scan and you're going to go through and you're going to say, no, 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 no. And then you're gonna say, a baby. So again, when I say like, I might get up tomorrow and have like six things or three things. I'm, I don't know until I go through all 26 points, but I have like maybe three, three I'm gonna rate. So I might have like three maybes, like this might rate good. Like I'm gonna have Oracle on my list, like Oracle, 
is a maybe. I don't know. And then I take my time. So technically five minutes per gap. But if I'm only rating three or four or five things, I'm not going to rush it. I'm going to do it and then I'm going to go have a cup of coffee and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to look at it again. Because remember, this is moving. And one of the reasons why I don't rate gaps at night, but again, this is a good idea for people who live in a different time zone if you, if you just can't get up early. Right now, the stock's at 150, 150 approximately. Tomorrow morning, it's not going to be there. It's probably going to be someplace else. Yeah, it could be at 160. It could be at 145, you know? So like, it's just sometimes you're just like, this is like so far away from 930 that I'm not gonna even waste my time doing it right now because I feel like it could change. But in the morning, you know, things pretty much are close to where I look at them around between six and seven o'clock in the morning. And then I double, triple check everything, you know, between 8:45, nine, and then I open the room at nine. So you're not gonna rate as many things as you think you're going to, Joe, even in the busy times, because you're gonna make a short watch list of just maybe, 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 and then you go and then you rate those. Does that answer your question? But I still don't rush them. I still don't rush them. I still take my time. And that's because I wanna make sure that I get it right. Also, if I have like, I'm like, I have two that I'm like, I really like this one, and I really like this one, and maybe they rate the same. Again, technically, you could do them both. But in the room in the morning when I'm day trading and I'm running the room and we're taking day trades on margin, and we're gonna talk about some margin trades, not, not options, but trades on margin, it's a lot to do two things at exactly the same time. So I'm trying to find the best one. I'm trying to narrow it down to find the best one. So Navinia could be another, Dan is the question. So Navinia could be another put in one to two weeks possibly. I have no idea where you're getting one to two weeks. You lost me there on the one to two weeks. That's why holding a short, quick trade is better for consistency. Well, that's two questions. I will explain about the short trades, but where are you getting one to two weeks? You lost me on that. I can't predict where NVIDIA will gap tomorrow, let alone one to two weeks. NVIDIA is a market stock. If the market is up tomorrow because Oracle's up tomorrow, then NVIDIA will probably be up too. It doesn't mean it's going to rally. It could fail in a gap up tomorrow. But to predict where NVIDIA will gap in the next one to two weeks, no, I can't predict that NVIDIA will gap down and be another short in the next one to two weeks. No, I don't know where you're getting the one to two weeks. You lost me on the one to two weeks thing. As far as quick trains, it's the same thing as anything in human nature. If I said to you, it's 4.37, what are you having for dinner tonight at 5.30? You could be like, oh, we're going, we're going out for pizza or I'm making hamburgers or something like that on the grill. If I said, what are you having two weeks from now? What are you making for dinner two weeks from now? <laughs> like, I have no idea what I'm making for dinner two weeks from now. You understand what I'm saying? So it's a, it just, it's human nature that it is a lot easier to predict where something's gonna go in the next few seconds, the next few minutes, the next few hours, and the next few days than it is for weeks or months out. Does that make sense? So that's just human nature. And again, humans are trading the stock market. Again, we're going into an election cycle. It's like saying, well, who, are, who do you think is going to win the election? And then how, what's the reaction going to be? No one knows. So I am, you know, looking at this NVIDIA as I would anything where I might have stocks that I'm watching or on my radar, but I'm not short this right now. And I'm also not planning on doing this in the next one to two weeks because the stock could do something that I want to do or don't want to do based on the market movements. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't confuse options trading with swing trading. Don't confuse options trading with swing trading. NVIDIA isn't an uptrend. This could make new highs in the next two weeks. And we just shorted it. It was a great short, it was a fabulous short. In fact, I also called the 100 puts. The same day that I called this, I called the 100 puts. It was a great call. There were two really big trades in this last week. 
but uh, this has nothing to do with the next one to two weeks. Don't confuse trading options as swing trades. Do you understand? And Joe, did I answer your question? Um, that you know what? Before I don't want to get off too off to topic here. Same thing here with the market. That's that's what I'm telling you here. That's what I'm saying about this market. I'm I don't know what happens with the Fed next week. I have no idea. I do not know. But I'm telling you, people have been trading the market basically swing trading the market in swing trades and in options could be weeklies could be dailies could be a couple weeks out people have been swing trading the market because the market's been making new highs and in an uptrend it's been working that may not that's not how i trade where i don't trend trade but that may stop working is what i'm saying soon it could or any time between now and the end of the year for all the reasons I just said. And people won't get that. It's like if I, it's like, a, a, you can't see my hands right now, but like, it's like if there's a, it's just like a switch, like you turn a knob, like I have a Cirrus radio and I turn it to turn it on or I turn it to turn it off. It's like you have a knob and you turn it. People, their brains aren't wired to switch it off if the market flips. Do you understand what I'm saying? They won't turn the knob off of buying because it's been working all year you get it and it could it might we might make new highs next wednesday i don't know i'm just saying i don't swing trade and i don't i don't look at i don't trend trade so 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 nvidia then i'll go back is a is a trade based on momentum so the momentum was selling. And we did it and we made the money and we got out. And then we'll do another one if it sets up and we'll get out. Could be a long, could be a short, I don't know. But, but it's a lot easier to tell where something's going fast, quickly, rather than long-term out. I mean, that's, that's just like human nature. Um, and then snow was another good one. And I just think snow is such a good example. Again, you don't have to take trades and hold them forever. Snow was a great example. We did the 120 puts in snow, um, that I called on Thursday, the 22nd snow. This was reasonably priced. I thought for the price point of the stock 350. So it's, it was cheaper to do snow, to buy the puts in this. You could have bought one and paid, you know, $3.50. You could have bought four. It was a hundred percent return investment. Here's the daily. You just couldn't get out. So again, this is a momentum trade. The way that we did it though as a put is cheaper than doing it as a day trade. Although we did day trade this too. Again, if you don't have a margin account, you can't do day trades. If you have an options account, the minimum balance is 2000. You could have spent $350 and got in, got out of the snow. So you don't have to hold anything of anything for any amount of time. You take it, you buy the put, you get the drop, boom out done Boop. that's it it's a trade based on momentum and that was a good trade it almost fell ten ten dollars see that so again what is snow doing now i don't know i don't know it doesn't matter why we did it we got in we got out okay so think about it you're 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 playing momentum it's momentum trading that's how the the profits are what they are do you know what i mean again going back to the example of getting a 10 cent move or a 25 cent move or something a little dinky moves momentum is a big move so obviously if you have a small size and a big move you can make money if you have big size and a big move you can make a lot of money so again how do you get to that point grow your account learn what to do get the precision underway but again having to whop on thousands and thousands and thousands of shares to make thousands of dollars is just so risky you know particularly in penny stocks but even in something that would just be a normal stock to, to just get such a small small move like i call it scalping that's really not what we do we're trading momentum but when you think about it you're like oh i see where this stock is getting sold off today let's do it you know let's short it whatever happens after that who knows don't worry about it 
as an active trader, your job is to make money. That's it. That's your job. You're not long-term investing and strategizing on NVIDIA and you're going to, this is not for your retirement account where you're trying to decide if, you know, when NVIDIA is going to fall and make new highs and all this. No, again, that's a different way to look at it. And you can, you can analyze gaps and look at it and make investment decisions that way if you want. But this is, we're making money, and again, I say it, we're chunking it out because that's what we, we're doing. The, the genius of my system is that we're looking with big position players who do take trades for long time periods out, in and out. We're looking at them, we're determining what they're doing, and then we're making a decision to play it for the short term, okay? That short term could be several seconds, several minutes, several hours on the day, or it could be a couple of days if we do an option, okay? But I'm seeing that institutional buying or selling or whatever so that I can win big because again I want the big move okay and I'm trying to get in as early as I can because if I get in early then where I get out is totally up to me I want to do NVIDIA and get out the first or second day boom you want to do NVIDIA you want to hold it to Friday fine okay any other questions Here's the spy. Um, again, you know, this is this was a sell-off. This was Friday, September 6th. This is a sell-off. Boom. That's a big bar. It's a ten dollar lot that's we had a lot of red last week. A lot of red. I mean, you 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 can't deny it. So again, people that love fundamentals, they love to look at, like I said, Oracle's having earnings right now. What is it saying? What are they doing? Are they laying people off? What is the profits? If you like that stuff and you really can get into that stuff, that's fine. But if it takes away from your ability to read what's actually actually happening, if a stock's rallying or falling, that's going to prevent you from making money. So don't get in your head too much with these things that it prevents you from looking at the stock or the market in a way, just go back here in a way that you're, I hate to say it, but it's true, non-biased. We are saying, oh, you know, this is, whew, we just had a big sell-off. But then you're like, oh, but everything's great and they're gonna lower rates, so let's go long or whatever, okay? If I could just use an example, I could say that about anything or any earnings or whatever. So I don't look at fundamentals. If that reinforces your knowledge base, great. But if it doesn't, you can't look away from what's happening at the price because that's all that matters because all you're doing is trying to make money and you don't have forever and ever to do that. Again, you have whatever amount of time you have for the trade. If you do an option, unless you're doing like a long-term option out to 2025, which is called like a leap, long-term out, and then you're paying a lot of money for it and it barely moves at any given day unless you have some extreme move overnight in a gap, the profit, even if it goes in your favor, is barely up. So, I mean, it just takes so long for trades like that to go. You have to get the move to go in your direction. And remember, every time you take a trade, your money in your account is being used to take the trade. Why not? Flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it. If you can take a trade on a Monday and get in, get out, and book the money, done, boom. If you take a trade on a Monday, and I'm just making it up, say your risk is $1,000, you take it, and you buy a put on a Monday, and you're like, I'm holding it, I'm holding it, I'm holding it. And again, say the trade's up, and you don't want to get out, because you want it to keep going, and maybe it does. You can't take another trade with that 1000 until you, and you don't have the profit either, so the money isn't booked until you're out of the trade and you exit the trade and you also have the money that's being sucked up to take the trade in the first place. Do you follow me? So again, you want to maximize your gains, which is actively trading too, not buying and holding, whether it's even if it's you're buying a put. Do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Any other questions here? Good question so far. I was gonna say something else and I forgot. Um, yeah, so again, I think volatility is gonna come into the market and we're gonna have gaps and you're gonna see directional moves in the next few weeks. You're gonna see institutional money. It's either gonna to commit to going long the market further, rallying it up new highs or selling it off, okay? You want to be on that side of the power because it's going to be a big move. 
could be could be up could be down could be up could be down could be up could be down you know i mean again there's so many things right now like even next week's number is not the be all end all between now and the election there will be a million other people strategizing other dec economic reports even after wednesday even if we rally wednesday there will be so many other things that everyone's going to try to predict than what the fed decides for december and the election too so you know the the institutional money that we're looking to play on is going to come into the market in some way shape or form on a regular basis and also stocks and again i typically do stocks we're not, i don't trade the market every day but there were trades in the market last week okay but i do gaps i focus on shorts we do longs too but i'm looking for gaps I'm looking for momentum. I'm looking for opportunity. When I see something and have a big move, I'm looking at that as opportunity, okay? It's, if you come and you take my class, particularly if you come to New York, it's like the best way I could describe my class, and, and especially the live class because I've, I've added so much stuff to it because it's a longer class, you know, it's, it's like a window into how I look at things. It's like a window into my mind about how I'm looking at a chart. It's like if I look at a chart and I say, well, how did Melissa know that that snow was going to fall? It's like the class is like a window into my brain, like taking a picture of what I see when I look at something to make the prediction that it's going to go up or down. And that's the genius in the system is that you will learn that skill set for yourself, that you can use it yourself, that you don't need me to call the trades in the room. You don't need me to be there every day telling you what to do that you will learn it yourself to do it long after you know i'm not running the stock swish anymore in the future after i retire you you will you will know how to do it on your own you know and so again the skills that are involved in trading is something that i think it's it's just it's just lacking all across the board because there's so many people out there that are teaching different things and get rich quick kinds of things that people buy into and then they never get the skill set and then they hear, hear about another thing that sounds so great and then they want to do that and they want to do that and they want to do that and then they never really become an expert in anything and they never get anywhere and they never learn any skills you know so shorting is a skill trading gaps is a skill being able to predict at six o'clock in the morning where stocks are going to go at 9 30 is a skill okay and that is what you have to learn it's a skill like we were talking about if you wanted to become a doctor you're not gonna go and just start performing surgery on people. You need to learn how to do it. I mean, again, people go and go through years and years and years of doing rounds and following other doctors and learning and, and, and uh, you know, before they get to that higher level. I think that, that trading is no different, but for some reason, the industry as a whole has just become so corrupt where people just think they can just run out and do things and take trades without learning what to do. But it's just, that's just not the case. It's just not the case. And so the best thing you can do is understand that you got to learn how to do it. And until you do, then get with someone that's really good at it and follow them. And then you're learning and absorbing and absorbing the information in the class and absorbing, absorbing like a sponge. Like every time I say something, you're saying, oh yeah, I liked that snow too when I got up. I saw that snow and I knew that snow would work too. And they say, yeah, I'm getting it. I'm getting the hang of it and, and that kind of thing, you know? Anyways, again, you know, I try to short. Now, Oracle tomorrow is gonna be up, I think. I don't know where it's gonna be. It could be up and fall. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. But every day I try to focus on the short side first. Now, if I can't find a bearish gap, I will look for a bullish gap, and then I will rate that too. But, you know, one trade a day is really all you need to make money, and it's a lot easier to focus again on one thing rather than a million things, even stock ticker symbols, even in the same strategy. So the room was closed last week, which I was originally going to be away for the holiday, and then I was doing stuff, getting ready for the live class, and then we ended up doing options. So I called some options trades, but this was the last week. The room was open, the end of August. These are all the trades we did in the room. This is an average risk of around $3,000 per trade. We're going to go over them all. It was a good week. Again, we had one loser, which was Dell, and we did Dell as a retake then, and that was the one long, which we're going to go over. But I'm mostly, mostly, mostly short. So we did BA, 
Again, this was 826. Just to show you again, if you were in the room with me, this here, we did, we made money. It may not even look like much of anything. Closed here, gap down, open, dropped. Again, it was a little rink or dink. 50 cents, we did it, got out, done, boom. If you had 500 shares, you would have made $250. 1,000 shares, you would have made $500. That's it. You don't, you don't even need that much, but it's the precision in what I'm doing that uh, that really helps me to, to profit as well. Uh, this was a weird one because I actually was up. I was actually up in this and I should have got out of it. I was up $2 plus in this. We shorted the market here. This was the Tuesday, the 27th. It closed here, gapped down. I did two things to stay in that I didn't pay attention to this and it got away from me. But anyways, I did not get out of this with profit. This was a break-even trade for me, but this really was a profitable trade. And people in the room got out of this with profit. I wasn't paying attention to it because we were doing the Amazon and that was the same day, and that was here. This closed here, gap down, fell, snug as a bug, did the Amazon, got out with money, did Amazon again, so then I was kind of distracted by the Amazon, and then I messed up the cues because that was a profitable trade. But I booked two good trades in the Amazon, and that was just a tiny little gap, but it worked, and it was good. Um, AAP was a good put. AAP was very cheap. It's not always that we get ones that are dirt cheap that are under a dollar, but there is times that we do. Sometimes there's ones when you can't even believe the price of it, actually. Uh, the NVIDIA 100 puts were dirt cheap, too. <laughs> that was a, that, I don't have that in here. Uh, that was a great trade. That was a really nice trade because I called it so far away from the strike. So last Tuesday, the stock was trading over $110, and I saw it would go to 100 and I called the trade, and it worked, and it basically almost got there, and it was a huge trade. Even though it didn't get to 100 it worked. So again, you you know, it, the, the, if you can see that something's going to go to something, sometimes they are really cheap because you're like, you're getting in something, and it seems so impossible or far away. Um, or again, it backs up on you or something, and then you get a really cheap price in it. But again, sometimes you have to wait. That AAP was one that we had to wait for the trade to go. But it was good. AVGO. I didn't do anything in that. I didn't do anything in that. I mean, we, we can't get everything. There's just, there's sometimes there's just, like, like I said, some days there's so many. You know, we have to pick and choose the ones that we want to do. I'm sure that was very, very expensive, though. And I'm not sure what the volume was in that, uh, that ABGO, uh, but I can for sure tell you it was probably crazy spready, crazy spready, and I'm sure it was crazy expensive. I don't, but I don't know if the volume was there, you know. But we didn't do it. Um, then we did Foot Locker, and this actually fell today. I mean, this is like. Basically, this was a really beautiful gap. Uh, stock closed here, gap down. We shorted it, got in, got out, done, boom. Again, short it. We got it close to 30, fell more than a buck, got out. So again, this was a day trade on margin. We also did put in this too. But again, look at this. Boo! We could have done this today, and I didn't see it till later. Uh, but you actually could have done this today. Again, the power of institutional money is a great example here. What, what was happening here? It's getting dumped. And then on Thursday, A29, we didn't do anything. Again, focus on quality. If nothing rates 20 points or more, then you're not gonna do any trades. You're not gonna do anything at all. And then we did the Dell. This was really just a mess kind of. So we did the Dell initially here. here this is gap up. So this is a long, just to let you know. Stock close here gapped up. So we got stopped in the Dell. I have the one minute in here. Then we got back into it. And then I added in it because it was going. This sold off like a banshee. Then I did the add. And then this is, again, in the lunchtime period, it went poo. And it went all the way up and ran up to 118, I think. It was crazy. Again, I prefer to short. But this was a day where there wasn't any good shorts and we did go long. But I took a stop in the first trade. Then I had to retake it. Then I did the add, which you didn't have to do. But I had the the chance to do more closer to close to my original price, and it was going, and we did it, and that was on Friday before the Labor Day. But anyways, it is kind of interesting. Again, you know, as strong as the market's been, 
even 2024, even this year, we've mostly, 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 mostly shorted. And that's just, just the way it is. And again, so this is one week in the row with an average risk of around 3,000. This was no trades on the Thursday. Again, room was closed last week. This was a week before the last week of August, 27,900 for this one week. So if your expectation is, again, you wanna do day trades, you need a margin account. If you wanna do options, then you have an options account. An options account, you could set up as a cash account. If you want to set up your options account as a margin account and do both, you can, okay? But it was an 86% win ratio for this week with one loser on that day. But really, Q's was, was really actually a positive trade. I just screwed it up. Was it doing too many things? So again, where will we be for this month? We have to see. We have to see what we get. But getting back to what I was saying, why do I like to short? I like to short because of the panic. The panic that comes in, the big moves that come in, the fast moves that, that come in. And again, think about it. It totally makes sense when you think about it. And while you may not need to understand why every single thing is happening, I think it does definitely helps you. And I think it helps you take risk. I think if you understand what's happening, then you'll trade better and maybe you'll take more risk or hold something or get out faster or do whatever you need to do for profit. Because again, a lot of times if you're doing things and you don't understand what's going on, you may make mistakes and you may not even understand why you're making the mistake. It's just you don't understand what's going on or maybe there's no basis for the strategy or the system that you're trading in the first place. You know, again, I get that people are going long a lot this year because the market has been in an uptrend and going up. But there were times this year besides the last week where the market sold off and longs didn't work. There were many, many weeks this year where that was the case, okay? They just weren't prolonged periods. But anyways, getting back to what I was saying, how are you gonna find and pick which gaps to trade? This is what you will learn in the class for me and if you come to New York. So again, the benefit of the New York class is we're gonna have time to go through things in more detail and also do more practices and practice gaps um, with charts. And I think that, again, it's the process that people have to go through. It's like anything that you do when you get good at something and you do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, it just becomes second nature. So I, like I said, I started trading gaps very early on in my career. I started trading in 2008 and I just gravitated towards gaps right away. But it took me three years to figure out this process. But even since that point, now I'm trading my 26 point method now for well more than 10 years. So it's just, again, you don't need to do a million different things. Whether you do trades as a day trade or whether you do trades as an option, that is not something that you have to even decide at this point. I think you learn the system, and if you're familiar with options and you would prefer to do them because you're used to doing them, start using the system doing options. If you have been day trading and you know how to do it and you never did an option before, then start doing the day trades. There's benefits to doing both. I do both. I like both. But... Again, make it easy for yourself because you have to learn the rating system, how to get the pick. That's the most important thing and the entry, okay? Um, so what is a gap? A stock gap, so the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. So again, it's looking at power money. Again, going back to Oracle, I'm just gonna bring this one up here because, oops, just lost it. Um, because of the fact that this is gapping, even though this is a bullish gap, this is a live gap. So the stock closed here at 139.89, and now it is at, see it's different than when we looked at it earlier, it's at 152.30ish. So again, this is a live gap, it's gapping up. What material is included with the class? As in, is there study materials that fly through the learning curve? We just have to take notes on our own. For the class online, you will take notes and you will get worksheets that are emailed to you. For the live class, you will still take notes, and I provide you with a notebook where you will take notes, and you will get the worksheets, but we're also gonna do charts, so you'll have chart printouts, um, which I don't have in the online class, where you're going to write on the charts, and you're gonna basically do it on the charts. So I think the, the, the in-person class is more beneficial because we're doing the ratings with charts together versus me, like right now, you're looking at a slide. Do you know what I mean? Like you will go through and write on it and, and have the chart in front of you printed out that we're going over. Like if you were sitting in front of me now in the class, we'd have a printout of Oracle, which 
you know, you just can't do that online. So I think that's, that's really going to be helpful to people that are coming to the class. Some of the people who are coming to the class actually have already done the class. So there's, there's people that are coming to the class that have been with me for a while that are, are going to meet me. They're renewing their subscriptions for the newsletter in the room for 2025. They're basically going to do the class again, and they've done it in the past, but they, there's some things that aren't connecting. And then, of course, they, they just decided that they, they want to do the class in person, and it's, it's, it's obviously more intense. The price of the class is more because I'm renting the space, but it's also a longer class. So you will have charts, and you go through, and you do it. And again, I'm a very hands-on person. When I created everything that I now do, I used to write on my charts all the time. That's how I was figuring it all out. I had to go back and I said, well, did this thing work? Or what happened here? Or why did this one work? If you're not a person that is into doing that, it's very beneficial. And again, that's going to be the benefit of the live class. You're going to be hands-on with charts. Any other questions? Um, that's how you learn fastest when writing them out and writing what out. Oh, for yourself, yeah. Okay, so again, we were talking about this earlier. How do you find golden gaps? You're going to rate them. There's plenty of places to find gaps. It's, you can buy a scanner, but honestly, there is just a million places to find gaps. Um, again, you can even watch TV in the morning. So it's not, it's not hard to find them. It's qualifying them that you're going to learn from me and then how to take the entries, how to do the exits. So you, you rate them once you learn the system. But there's, again, thousands and thousands of thousand things every day that gap. But the checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. And that's what we're... That's what we're focusing on. So again, gaps are the secret, secret ingredient that tell you so much, so much information. And you get to see it ahead of time. It's like, again, I'm not in the trade until it happens, okay? But they're very important. And again, we were talking about having a niche and a specialty. A lot of people don't understand gaps. They don't know the importance of them. They don't know how to trade them. They, they might do them and do it as a gap fill and then it doesn't work. And they say, well, why didn't this work? I don't trade gaps as gap fills, okay? Again, it's not, if it was that easy to just say, well, it's going to fill the gap, it would be very easy to just look at it and say, boop. I mean, it's not that way. Not all gaps fill. The fact that people think that is the case is incorrect. And if you've ever looked at a chart, you know that too. And that often trips people up. Then when they're trading and then they get set off of gaps, but actually gaps are very profitable. And on most any given day, tomorrow is a good example too, because if the market's up tomorrow with the Oracle, on most any given day, most stocks will go with the market. So if you can't read the market direction, then how are you going to make money? And again, sometimes the market could be up and fall. Sometimes the market could be down and rally. So if you need the market's direction in order to make money, it's going to be very difficult for you to be consistent. I am sometimes trade the market, but for the most part, 99.9999% of the time, I trade stocks that have nothing to do with the market and don't need the market. Okay, Again, Foot Locker would have worked with or without the market. NVIDIA would have worked with or without the market. In fact, NVIDIA probably dragged the market down. NVIDIA was falling before the queues on the 3rd. Uh, will there be ongoing support via email phone after the class for anyone who needs it? Yes, you can know. Well, the ongoing support is me. <laughs> the support is moi. <laughs> so if you have questions, you would email or call me, Joe. Uh, as far as the the class, um, if you need support help getting in the live trading room, I have an assistant. He will be at the class. You will meet him. He does the technical things like how to enter the room and stuff like that. But as far as the system, it's me. So yes, you can email me questions after the class. Yes, you can call me on the phone after the class. Um, and again, if you're in the room, you could just ask me questions there in the live day and I answer questions in the room. We trade in the morning. 
And then after we're done tray, I say, is there any questions? Does anybody want to go over anything? You can always ask me questions in the room after we do footlock or whatever. But I'm I'm the support. I'm the I'm the person that created the system, that does it, that makes the decisions. Um, you know, and again, I know it better than anybody. You know what I mean? So uh yes, you can contact me afterwards and hopefully you won't stay on as a client. I mean, again, I want people to get it. I mean, I just got done telling you, you know, I have people with me for quite a long time. So they do ask me questions, even though they paid for the class a while ago. And um, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you sign up for the live class, you are in the training room and the options newsletter and the market report to the end of 2025, which is a very long time. I can't even believe I'm saying 2026, but you wouldn't have to renew until January 2026, which is crazy. 2026, that's just nuts. But um, it's a long time. It's not quite a year and a half. It's a year and, you know, four months or whatever it is. So there are some people that are already trading that already had signed up for the class that are already in the room every day that signed up for the class in New York a little bit ago and have already been trading. They got the puts last week, which was, you know, we had a good week last week with, with the sell-off. But after that, if you want to stay in the room or stay in the newsletter, once you become a student and a subscriber of the GAP class, I do holiday specials like for Black Friday for people to renew. So once you become a student, I, I have the prices on the website, but I offer discounts to people who are prior students of the GAP class. And that changes year to year. So I don't know what I'm going to be doing for Black Friday for 2025. Again, I can't even wrap my head around thinking about 2026, 2025 right now. It's not holiday 2024, but every year at the end of the year, when people come up for renewals, I do sales for students, for subscribers that are on a separate list, that are discounts. Um, what else? Anything else? Anyways, the checklist... Again, you want to use it, you want to do it, it's very helpful. Again, power money is what we're looking for every day and really the right information. And, you know, we're so inundated with information. I was talking to a friend earlier. Again, I appear on TV, so it's hard for me not to watch the news. I kind of got to know what's going on, plus I trade. But at the same time, sometimes we're just so inundated with information. Television, news, social media, emails. I get so many emails now with it's just, you know, it's almost like you can't even keep up with it all. It's just, you know, it's like I, I took a week off last week just to get caught up. I mean, we're just bombarded with so many things. Sometimes you just have to step back and focus on what you need to focus on for your own self-empowerment, for your own well-being, and focus on the right information because it's very easy to get sucked into the wrong information. It's very easy to get sucked into the negativity. It's very easy to get sucked into the fear. And then that takes you down a path that you don't want to be down. There's no way of getting around the fact that trading involves risk. There's just no way of getting around it. So, I mean, when you take a trade, you have to take risk to take it. That's why I tell people start out slow. And again, that's why the support of being in the room and everything for so long until the end of 2025 is a long time. You shouldn't feel rushed. Like you got to quick make the money back for the class or something because you're only going to get a month free or something. You should be thinking of it in a long-term goal of learning it and doing it, okay? And not feeling rushed, okay? And I use stops, you know? Like I took the stop in Dell. I had the stop in. So if Dell would not have set up, I would have lost, you know, on the day in Dell. It did, but when I do a day trade, I take a stop. And again, when I do an option, my risk is my stop. So if the trade blows out and I lose, I lose the whole thing. Now, some people are killing the options if they're down 50%. I don't do that. I don't do that. But you could, okay? So again, whatever your risk is, we stay within our risk. And our, that is based on what? It's based on your cash. You say, well, Melissa, I have you know $10,000 to trade options. Okay, well, then you can't risk $10,000 in a day. You know, then your account, you'd have nothing. If I call 10 trades, you can't do 10 trades with a $1,000 risk. What if they all fail? You're like, well, they all worked last week. Yeah, but you have to go within the confines of your own account. 
So when you're putting yourself and you say you want to trade, again, I think it's easy for me because I don't have any kids and I'm not married. I'm still single. I don't even have any pets. But if I had a pet, I probably would, you know, put the pet in another room while I train. You just for a half an hour a day, you got to just 930 to 10, get yourself locked in a room or your office or wherever, quiet time, turn off the TV, turn off your phone, focus on what you're doing, listen to me in the room, listen to me call the trades, listen to what I have to say, because again, I know what I'm doing, and you do it. And then that's it, boom, you have the rest of the day to do whatever you want. It's We're so constantly bombarded by information that it can be extremely difficult to focus, and there's so many stocks out there and so many things to do. And you can get in and out of a trade very quickly. As much, as easy as you can make money, as easy as you can lose it. So you want to make sure, and this is why I spend time in the morning before the market opens. I want to make sure I like this thing. I'm not rushing, rushing to make a decision about it. The trades I do, I make it in and out in five minutes, but I might have taken two hours to decide I wanted to do it. So the pre-work, that's everything you're going to learn in the class. That's so important. Because that's what helps me say, I 100% love this NVIDIA and I'm not doing it yet until the market opens, but all of the thinking is all before the open. And so then my mind's made up or I don't like anything, you know, in the days we didn't, we didn't do anything. Anyways, it's easy to press the button when you know what to look for. And I think it's all about the conviction for me when I rate the gap, if it rates 20 points or more, the higher it rates, the more conviction I have. Again, you know, it's not something that takes a lot of time to do the ratings. Obviously, it takes more time if you're new. But again, the support of the room should help you. Because if I say NVIDIA is the best scat, you know, then again, that's what you should be focusing on. And particularly if I happen to call a day trade and an option on the same stock, on the same ticker, on the same day, and the market maybe even too, then, you know, I love that one. Okay, whatever it is. Anyways, if you want to make a living, you can do this from home. You could do it on the side. You could do it part time, but you're going to learn what direction to do the gap, rating it, focusing on the bearish gaps. We trade them in the morning. You're going to learn the entries in the class. You're going to learn the exits in the class. And again, it's all gaps. So you must have a platform that allows you to look at charts. And again, we rate the gaps on the daily. So if you don't have that set up before the class, you will set that up after the class. Most places you can make your charts look exactly like mine. If you want a referral for a broker, you can email me too. If you have an account at a place that you like, just stay with the place that you're at. You can make your charts look like mine. Anyways, every day I'm looking for gaps that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Number two, a big move on the day. Number three, early confirmation of the bias and the move in between 9.30 and 10. And the precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. So again, what is your goal? Find gaps that rate 20 points or more. Set it up that you can make at least one risk unit and create a money management plan for yourself, your risk per trade and how many trades you're gonna do a week. And that's whether you do day trades or options. Because a lot of people say, well, I wanna make this much money and this much, this much. Just go get the plan. Start with the gap rating, start with the amount per trade, Try to flip it over once, and then your goal is to grow your account. So I said, well, I only have this much money. I said, okay, well, then if you have 5,000, you're trying to grow it to six. You have six, you're trying to get it up to seven. You have seven, you say, okay, we're just trying to get up to 10. And that's how you do it. It's like if you're on a diet, you're like, oh, my God, I have to lose, you know, 20 pounds. You're not going to lose 20 pounds in a week. You're not going to lose 20 pounds in a month unless you're on a Zempic. You know, you're like, I want to do it slow. I want to lose two pounds a week. You say, okay, fine. Maybe you're doing better. Maybe in a month you lost seven. You say, oh my God. And now you're like, oh, I'm getting there. That's all you have to do. And I found that from teaching people for as long as I've had the business, that's, that's enough for people. People are so, you know, deep in the mix where they've taken tr trades and classes and lost money trading that they almost feel like it's never going to happen. So again, once people start to realize that it in fact can happen for that on a consistent green amount of money over time and the occasional big one, okay, then they, their whole attitude changes. And then they see and realize that this can be something that they can do. It's like so many people are just in the muck because they've been trying to trade for so long and they haven't done anything that worked for so long. And they just like, it's just 
understanding that it can work and then implementing it and that it's really the consistency. You know, it's every single person that traded in the room with me in the month of August made money. You, every single person that did every option last week made money. It's just, you would, you, you could have been blind as a bat. The trades worked. So it's, it's like, it's just people have to lift themselves up out of where they are and it's step by step by step. You know, everybody wants to be able to risk all this kind of money and get to this point. That's great. But if that's not where you're at right now, then you have to take where you have and what you're at and get to the next level. It's baby steps, but the baby steps don't have to take forever. And it could take faster than you think because you never, never know, you know, and that's the beauty of trading and that's the excitement of trading. And again, that's why every day is exciting. I don't, maybe I'll do Oracle tomorrow. Maybe I'll do something completely different. I don't even know. Maybe Oracle will be down tomorrow. Maybe it won't even be up. I mean, trading is exciting and that's how you have to look at every day. I mean, it's definitely exciting being in the room. It's definitely not boring being in the room with me. So anyways, be practical and professional when you trade. I definitely try to mentor people. You know, it's important to have somebody ask questions too. And again, you will learn the rating system. You will learn the checklist. You will learn this in the class to be able to empower yourself to do it for yourself. So you will learn the whole system. You will learn the 26 points. You will learn the entries. You will learn the exits. You'll learn targets, support and resistance. And again, we will be rating gaps and we will be discussing options too in a section of the class as well uh, because it's two and a half days for the live class. So it's a full class on how to strategically find, pick and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The deadline is Thursday. I know that's in a few days. Some of you are already aware of that. It's just I have to give the spacing to the uh, to the building, to the room. I'm trying to see if they will give me through the weekend um, I had a meeting with the girl Friday. I'm waiting to get an email back from her today or tomorrow morning. I have to check my email. They have to set up the desk. They're in charge of the space. Um, you know, and so it's, it's less than two weeks away. Any questions about anything? If you want to sign up again, you will get the trading room, the newsletter and the market report through the end of 2025. Any questions from anyone about anything? Again, some of you I recognize, some of you I do not recognize. If you have questions. I did not look at the weather. It's, we've, had, we've had beautiful weather though. Actually, today was a beautiful day. I didn't realize it when I planned the class that September 20th was the first day of fall, but it's probably gonna be beautiful. I mean, it's been in the 50s, or 60s, mild 70s. So it's probably going to be very nice. Any questions? You can also email me here. And then if you want to sign up, you will email me. I will send you the sign up forms. Then you will get registered. Then you will get the information where the location is. And if you have to travel to come to New York, then you have to figure that out. Again, booking hotel flights or whatever, I will give you places close by if you need to do that. You still have time. Oh no, I spelled, I spelled, my, I'm just rushing here, sorry. This is my email. Here we go. So we'll see what happens tomorrow with the market in Oracle. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful evening, everyone. And some of you I will talk to later. You're welcome.